subscribe to my next best by going to our YouTube page and clicking the subscribe button. Press the bell icon next to it to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Hey what is up guys this is Vineet and you're watching my next best. In this video we'll be doing the unboxing and quick review of eBox R99 Android TV box. Let's get started. Like a bird on a tree. I'm just sitting here. Well, the R99 Android TV box has some very impressive stats and overall its performance is quite good. However, before you can really take advantage of everything that the R99 has to offer, you are going to have to spend some time customizing it and truly making it your own. At first glance, the R99 looks really clean and high tech. The R99 has very little in the way of branding with only an Ultra HD 4K logo and R99 printed on the top face of the unit. It's a solid black aluminum and plastic case with a really classy home trim running around the top. The unit itself is extremely small in a square form factor at about 4 and 3 4 inches to a side and a depth of less than 1 inch. At this juncture we'd like to thank your best for sending out this review unit. The test package we received arrived with a complimentary air mouse which was definitely a nice added touch. Packaging wise everything was solidly wrapped and protected and arrived in perfect condition. The box itself however has very little in the way of detail or information about the product or its specs and I'd say this is a bit of a miss. When unpacked, all of the key elements are there including an extra remote. While not as powerful as the provided air mouse, this remote by itself is good enough to navigate the essentials. From the connections point of view, all the bases were covered. LAN, optical, HDMI and power are all at the back and multiple USBs. You'll need one for the remote including a Type-C connection as well as SD card are available on the side of the unit. So basically there are a couple of types of power plugs that these review units come with. This one is the EU plug and they're selling separate units with the UK plug or the US plug so you have to buy appropriately. And by the way, the EU plug is $7 costlier. The actual price of the EU plug is $154. And except for the EU plug, all others cost $147. The manual is well written and clearly set out. Unfortunately, the screens shown on the manual do not match with the unit. The R99 actually has some pretty impressive specs across the board with a multitude of available ports and enough RAM to tick all of the boxes. It offers a host of connectivity options and tries to meet every possible scenario imaginable. From the connectivity point of view, it comes with Wi-Fi 802.11bgn as well as the new AC. It's a dual band box as almost all Android TV boxes are 2.4 GHz plus 5 GHz. It comes with built-in Bluetooth 4.0 chipset. There are two USB ports, one is a USB 2.0 along with USB 3 as well along with the HDMI 2.0 included. Now from the memory and storage front, memory is 4 GB DDR3 RAM and the storage is 32 GB eMMC which is upgradable to 64 GB via micro SD card slot. 
Now another power factor is the processor. It's the RK3399 Hexa Core 64 bit dual Cortex A72 core and another quad Cortex A53 core processor, which really gives it a massive power and energy to breeze across all sorts of applications and games. It also includes the ARM Mali T860 high performance CPU with quad core 800 MHz. Now a sort of a miss is that it comes preloaded with Android 6 Marshmallow. Although there is Android Nougat upgrade option but I've used it, I don't find it to be going really well. Most of the applications go crashing down and there are some booting issues as well. As well as some issues with playing videos on YouTube and some other applications. So I had to degrade it back to Android 6 which actually works very smooth. A good thing is that they've patched the firmware to April 2017 which is sort of okay but definitely requires another patching. Now talking about Kodi, it really works well on this box. I haven't had any issues as such and it is included in the box. Additionally, you may note that they have Netflix app on their eBox store which you have to use exclusively for utilizing Netflix. If you uninstall that Netflix and go for the Netflix from the Play Store, it will not work. The reason is that this box is pre-rooted and generally Netflix doesn't work on pre-rooted devices. So you have to note this thing, you know, you can go to the eBox store and download it again and utilize your credentials and use it. I've done some experiments here and there with Netflix, but it did not work. So I had to go back to the store and download the app again from their store and then use it. And that Netflix in their store works perfectly fine. So I haven't had any issues playing videos on Netflix and you know, the speed has been really smooth. I'm using the five gigahertz band and it works very well. Generally the 2.4 GHz band is choked for most of the time and these Android TV boxes are purposely built to utilize high bandwidth and most of the time I haven't seen them working perfectly fine on 2.4 GHz unless an underlayer access point is somewhere near the line of sight of the box or maybe you connect it through a LAN cable. So the better option is go for 5 GHz band, keep it obviously at the line of sight but that ensures that this box utilizes that 5 GHz high bandwidth to play the videos perfectly well. Overall, it has been a breezer of a journey and uh, I've been quite pleased with the box. Once I'd customized the way I wanted the box to look. The initial interface was fairly simple and uh, looked very much similar like a tablet which wasn't really suitable for TV. It's actually the Nova launcher which comes pre-installed in the box. So there's quite a bit that you can do to customize it in your own way. What I've really found is that simplicity is the key when it comes to TV boxes. As for me, they're primarily an interface to access media and gaming as well. So guys, that was my unboxing and quick review of the R99 Android TV box. I'll be putting up another video around the full review of this box and the good things and the bad things that I got on the box. Although there are more good things than bad. In fact, there are really less bad things. Huge number of good things that I've experienced in this box. So I'll be posting that video very soon but for now this is all I have for you guys. If you like this video give it a big thumbs up, share this video and subscribe to my next best and I hope to see you guys in my next video. Take care and have a good rest of the day. Bye bye.